welcome everybody. We have a very special treat for you. Uh, our friend Jim Quick is going to talk to us about learning and procrastination in these next two episodes. Jim is the founder of Quick Learning and widely recognized as a world expert in speed reading, memory improvement, brain performance, and accelerated learning. He's spoken all over the world to huge companies, but we have called him a friend for many years and uh, just really grateful to have you on the Brain Warriors Way podcast. Yeah, thank you. I love you too so much. And uh, the work that you're doing is so, so important. I don't know what's more important than really understanding and optimizing this incredible like gift that we have between our ears called our brain. So I'm excited about this conversation. So how did you get involved in wanting to know about the brain and um, get involved in teaching people about reading and memory? And- yeah. I mean, a lot of times, and the three of us have shared stages all different around the, different places around the world. I do these demonstrations, and I'll have maybe 100 people stand up, introduce themselves, and I'll remember their name. Or um, they'll give me 100 words or 100 numbers, and I'll memorize them forwards and backwards. But I always tell people, I don't do this to impress you. I really do this to express to you what's possible. Because the truth is, we all have the potential to do this. We just weren't taught. If anything... You know, we were taught somehow like a lie that somehow our intelligence or memory potential focus is somehow fixed, like our shoe size. But we, we, we've we learned, you know, as you've pioneered this more, we've learned more about the human brain in the past 20 years than the previous maybe 2,000 years combined. And we found is we're also grossly underestimating our own capabilities. And, you know, school didn't necessarily prepare us for this digital world that we live in. Mm-hmm. We live in a world of electric cars and spaceships that are going to Mars by our vehicle of choice when it comes to learning and education. It's akin to a horse and buggy, yeah. and it hasn't been updated. And I know this is possible because I grew up with learning difficulties. Um, when I and you know this because you've you've scanned me. At the age of five, I had a traumatic brain injury. I had a very bad accident, and I had learning challenges. I didn't understand things as well as everybody else did. Teachers would repeat themselves three, four times. Poor focus, poor memory. Um, it took me an extra few years to learn how to read, even. And uh, I didn't know, and I just didn't know what I didn't know. I suffered and I struggled all through school. And then around 18, I had a breakthrough where I just started studying. I ended up in the hospital because I was just not eating, not sleeping, working all, and I felt actually, I passed out in the library one night. I fell down a flight of stairs. I hit my head again. Oh, and I woke up in the hospital a couple of days later and I was wasting away, um, lost all this weight, but it made me think there has to be a better way. And I started, I wanted to understand this idea of how does my brain work so I can work my brain better? How does my memory work so I can work my memory? So I started studying everything from the latest adult learning theory, multiple intelligence, to mnemonics, to ancient, like what did the ancient Greeks do back when there was no printing press and there was no smartphones? You know, what did uh, Native Americans do? How did they pass on history around campfires back then? And everything in between. And then I just really turned my brain back on. And all that light switch flipped on and my grades improved. And with that, my life improved. And one of my very first students, though, the reason why I'm doing this even to this day, over a quarter century later, is one of my students, she, um, she was a freshman in college. She read 30 books in 30 days. And I wanted to find out not how. I know how she did it, but why. And I found out her mother was dying of terminal cancer, was only given a couple months to live. And the books she was reading were books like The Two of You Right, books to save her mom's life. And she ended up doing so. And that I realized that if knowledge is power, learning really is our superpower. It's just not a superpower we're taught. School teaches us what to learn and what to think, but very few classes on how to learn and how to think. And that's, uh, my goal is no brain left behind. I want to show people the power that they have okay. within themselves. And So how can people, what are some of the big things you've learned that yeah. our audience can take away? Yeah, well, I've, I've learned a lot from the two of you over, over the years, you know, in terms of, I found a lot of the research suggests that maybe one third of it, of our potential when it comes to, for example, our memory is predetermined by maybe genetics and biology, but two thirds is in our control. So I've learned a lot from the two of you in terms of a good brain diet, in terms of killing automatic negative thoughts, in terms of the power of of movement and exercise and the power of supplementation, um, positive peer group, clean environments, sleep, 
brain protection, wear that helmet, avoid those extreme sports, stress management, new learnings, everything. So that's like the hardware part of it, right? You know, because I could teach somebody how to read faster and improve their reading rate three times or remember names or learn languages fast, but if their hardware is not in place, you know, those techniques, exactly. Right. So that's, so, so what I teach is once the hardware is in place, um, when people through your teachings, um, then I could teach them the software. And so for example, for learning, if somebody has, I think in this digital world, there's like these super villains, there's digital overload, too mm -hmm. much information, too little time. We're mm -hmm. drowning in it. And it's like taking a sip of water out of a fire hose and it's creating a health challenge called information anxiety. Higher blood pressure. So I love pressure. super villains. Right. In yeah, my like new book, that. The End of Mental Illness, I actually close it with the evil ruler okay. versus the good ruler. Uh -huh. And I think of Darth Vader versus Yoda. And I see myself like Yoda, you know, bald, big ears. Um, Want to be that voice in your head that mm. helps you do the right thing. But we live in a society of super villains and we evil do. rulers stealing mm. our attention. It does. So yeah, dig digital overload is too much information. It creates information is higher, higher blood pressure and compression leisure time, more sleeplessness. It's just, and it's getting worse because the amount of information is doubling at dizzying speeds. So that's one super villain, digital overload. Another one is digital distraction. You know, we have these smart devices and every app notification, social media alert, it's training our, our distraction muscles and people are picking up their phone the first time, you know, when they wake up, it's the last thing they see when they go to sleep. And you know, when you wake up first thing in the morning and I have a video, it has over 20 million views. It's just talking about, don't touch your phone the first hour of the day and see what happens because it's training us to be number one, distracted, you know, every like, share, comment, cat video with dopamine flood on, you know, it's just, it's, so you know, we, we wonder why we can't have a conversation and remember what we just read or something simple like that because our distraction, but also it's training us to be reactive. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our friend Brendan Burchard says, your inbox is nothing but a convenient organizational system for other people's agenda for your life. And we're just in, on defense. So we get a text message, a voice message first thing in the morning where we're extremely suggestible. You know, we just woke up and it's just training us to just react to things as opposed to proactively do something. But the third, the third thing is something I've learned from the two of you is not only digital overload, digital, uh, digital distraction, but digital dementia. This idea where we're so dependent on our smart devices and they're making oh, us, so they're making us stupid. We're so cog, you know, they're doing these cognitive tasks, our to do's, our schedule, all these things. And we're getting, we're not, we yeah, have remember, lost the ability. On your phone. Exactly. And so in terms uh, of learning did faster. Did you know that dementia is actually being diagnosed later because of our smartphones? So it used to be 30 years ago when we first started Amen Clinics, I would get these calls from family members mm -hmm. saying, mom couldn't find her way home. Right. She's crying. I had to go find her and we need to work this up. And now because her phone will tell her. GPS. Step by step how to get home. She's actually not diagnosed two years later when and she's less to, likely right. to respond to the treatment. Because they're not, if you have a device, third party device telling you when and where to turn, you're not realizing when you would have memory lapses. Right. right. And, and, and many people don't even know their own phone number because right. of their wife's phone number. And not that I want to memorize 500 phone numbers. I certainly, I can, but I, <laughs> well, we lost the ability to remember just one number or a conversation or what we just read or what hotel room we're in. Mm -hmm. And those kind of memory lapses, you know, they're debilitating, you know, it impairs every area of our life. So to learn faster, there are a number of things people could do. If you have a subject or skill, you want to be able to learn. And by the way, the fourth, besides digital overload, digital distraction, digital dementia is digital depression. You know, I'm very concerned oh, sure. over, you know, we've had this conversation about mental health, how we live in a society where everyone's comparing themselves to this highlight curated trailer of other people's lives. And kids are just so overwhelmed by the perfection that they right. see repeatedly, even though it's not, supermodels don't look like supermodels. Right. But, <laughs> but kids don't know that. Well, even just this morning, Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones came out and said she'd been depressed, mm -hmm. she'd been suicidal. So even the people who you think have it all, right. um, they may have what you want, but they don't have anything they needed. Right, and so it's an epidemic. So how do you overcome these challenges? I mean, that, that's that's why I feel like we're all in this mission together. It's about education, it's about, it's about training and resources for people. And so going back to the first challenge, which is digital overload that we mentioned, is there's certain things you can do to learn faster, to keep up with this high rate of change, um, because we're not learned. And this is the area of meta-learning, learning how to learn. And so, 
I use a very simple acronym called FAST, F-A-S-T. So if everyone could think about a subject or skill that they'd like to get better at, it could be martial arts, it could be Mandarin, it could be music, it could be marketing. Um, what keeps us, and of course we want to be able to learn it in, in a short period of time, because the greatest asset we have really is our time. It's the one thing we don't get back, you know, our attention. And so four things to think about, F-A-S-T. The F is, if you want to learn something faster, is forget it. Meaning that um, you're like, Jim, I thought there was a conversation about memory. But it's just a lot of people don't learn something brand new because they think they know it already mm. and because their cup is full. And so temporarily suspend what you know about something. Keep an open mind. Your mind is like a parachute. It only works when it's open. It's cliche, but it's true. But a lot of people don't learn something because they, they'll say they have 30 years of experience, but sometimes it's when you deconstruct it, they have one year of experience they've repeated 30 times. Oh, and they're not evolving it because they, they feel like they know it. The other things I would temporarily forget are situational things. We know multitasking is a myth, and a lot of people are trying to learn something, but their mind is thinking about other things. And a simple hack for that is just to write it down. Your mind goes to the kids or the dry cleaners, write it down, so then you can release it. Because if you try not to think about it, what you resist persists. Right. And then so it gets worse. But it's just metaphorically, if you're thinking about three or four different things, it only leaves you 25% to be actually focused on this task at hand. Mm -hmm. um, we know also, obviously, there's no multitasking, there's just task switching, which, you know, people are actually have more errors, takes more time. It can take anywhere from a few minutes to 20 minutes just to regain your focus and your flow back on the original task. Um, so that that's actually debilitating. And then the third thing I would forget temporarily is, are our limitations, because we just don't know what we don't know in terms of what's possible, because we all have this learned helplessness, you know, just like that elephant. You wonder why the elephant doesn't just tear down the whole circus mm -hmm. tent, but it's since it's been a a baby it's been trying and it couldn't do it the first couple of days or couple of weeks and so then it learned up. it's helpless but it, in actuality it's not and so in what areas you know I, I love what you talk about killing ants because I when people say they're too old or they're not smart enough I always tell people if you fight for your limitations you get to keep them and people are always arguing for their limitations like and your mind is always eavesdropping on your self talk that's really good and so <laughs> your mind is always eavesdropping on that on that self talk and so if people truly knew how powerful their minds were they wouldn't say or think things they didn't want to be true it's not that having one bad thought is going to ruin your life any more than eating just that one donut but it's the consistency of it when we're and talking about the question thoughts exactly you believe and then you act out of the belief mm -hmm. even if it's a lie exactly and that's where i mean about forgetting about temporarily what you believe is is possible i, and, I want to repeat that one thing because it was so good mm -hmm. if you fight for your limitations or you fight to keep your limitations right then they're yours. They're yours. Yeah, so they you get are. to keep them. Yeah. And so many people argue for their limits and then that they get they get to keep them. And it's a challenge. So we have to get out of that habit. And I, I know you 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 teach so many different methods for killing automatic negative thoughts. So that's it's vital. So that's the F is forget. The A in fast stands for active. I feel like a lot of us don't learn. We learn slow because we're passive learners, meaning we grew up in a 20th century education that prepares for a 20th century world, which at the turn of the century was just following directions and working in assembly mm -hmm. lines and agriculture. But we live in such a dynamic world now. The human brain, as you know, it doesn't learn just by being lectured to. You know, we, the human mind, we don't learn through consumption. We learn more through creation and co-creation, social learning. And so you can't just lecture to somebody and have like positive change. Uh, otherwise, the world would be a lot different place. And so, but it, 20th century education was like sit quietly by yourself. Don't talk to your neighbors. Very passive. But we know learning like life is not a spectator sport. So how can you make this learning endeavor of learning Mandarin martial arts some more active, you know, active note taking, actively t asking questions, actively feeling like how you're going to share it to other people, because you get to roll up your sleeves and get involved, and that's that's where you're actually going to learn it better. Can I throw something in there? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's something that it's funny I didn't know your acronym, mm -hmm. but um, my daughter used to go to one of the very large high schools in our area, and um, just didn't like it at all, wasn't doing very well. Mm. I mean, she I, that's not true. She had a 3.5 GPA, but she didn't feel like she was meeting her potential. And she just came home one day. She's like, I really want to focus on my future. I'm not going to know these people in 10 years. Can I homeschool? Right. So I was concerned about it at the time, but, but she's had this chance to travel around the world with us. She's got, and the program I picked, I noticed this instant change with her, this love of school, this, her GPA like flew through the roof. Mm -hmm. She's got straight A's. Like if she has a 97% in the class, that's low. Wow. And and I'm like, is it because the program is not hard? And then I realized, no, that's not what it is. Because it's an online program and it's a mastery program and she doesn't have teachers sitting in front of her telling her stuff, 
She has to do it. Mm. She has to write it. She has to come up with it. She's in charge of it. And they use world, real world situations. Right. And I just instantly saw her take responsibility for her learning. That's and active part. listening. Active learning is so important. It was wild. Stay with us. When we come back, we're going to finish the FAST acronym. We're also going to talk about procrastination. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're interested in coming to Amen Clinics, use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 978-1363.